on uh, Friday, I apologize for some remarks that I made and others made, but particularly ones that I made uh, on this program to the women's basketball team at Rutgers University. And it was a straightforward uh, apology that Charles and I wrote. And uh, I didn't uh, offer any, I didn't think it was necessary to offer any excuse. No, I don't think there is now. In light of women's college basketball soaring, let's revisit Don Imus. On his radio show, he said this of the Rutgers women's basketball team. That's some nappy-headed up there, I'm going to tell you that now. Oh, man. man, that's some move. And uh, <clears throat> the girls from Tennessee, they all look cute, you know, so. Like, kind of like a, I don't know. Spike Lee thing. Yeah. yeah. The yeah, Jenga Booth versus the Wannabes, yeah, was that a, movie that he had. Yeah, it was a tough... Uh... Imus would land in hot water, though conservatives would defend him. I don't think anybody should be fired over this. I don't think Don Imus should have been fired over his joke about the Rutgers basketball teams. Like Bernard Goldberg, disgraced ex-real sports journalist. Conservative activist David Horowitz went on the air with host Peter Broyles and said, the campaign of the left now is to drive conservative talk radio off the air. They're basically hammered and for 10 days and abused and lose his job and have uh, and be treated as though he's one of the great evil men of Western civilization, I thought was appalling. The man is a friend of mine and I think a, a real spirit of censorship was involved in here. Pat Buchanan, who worked under Ronald Reagan, hated the decision. No. Page 70, Serena shocked by racist heckler. See, I personally stayed away from that for your benefit. I was on an airplane. <laughs> <laughs> I miss co-host Sid Rosenberg also joined in and has shown his racism many times over. He'd say of the game, it was a tough watch. The more I look at Rutgers, they look exactly like the Toronto Raptors. Rosenberg was also a man who referred to Palestinians as stinking animals and suggested they ought to drop the bomb right there. Kill them all right now. And yes, this guy, Jason Whitlock, would defend Don Imus as well. He'd write, thank you, Don Imus. You've given us, black people, an excuse to avoid our real problem. Thank you, Don Imus. You extended Black History Month to April, and we can once again wallow in victimhood, protest like it's 1965, and delude ourselves into believing that fixing your hatred is more necessary than eradicating our self-hatred. What the hell is he talking about? Imus at the time represented what many male-centric sports fans felt and sadly to this day tweet to their tens of followers, no one cares about women's sports. Imus would be dropped by MSNBC, who simulcast his show after his remarks. It would not stop there, however. Then CBS CEO Les Moonves would announce his company, which owns both the radio station that broadcast Imus's program and Westwood One, which syndicated the program, had fired Don Imus and ceased broadcasting him and his show. And like clockwork, Fox Business would pick up the show because when bigotry is spewed and repercussions are felt, Rupert Murdoch's network always comes calling. Yeah, but, but GE didn't stand by you. Well, they shouldn't have. Well, well, on, on what basis? They should have fired you? Well, I don't know about that, but it's not important whether I was kidding or not. Obviously, I was, but I think that's irrelevant. I, don't, I didn't see any way, considering the way this, that the whole media firestorm and how it got so blown out of proportion, um, but I didn't see that they could do anything else that made any sense, you know? You heard correctly. I just thought the whole thing was blown out of proportion. It was not. The Rutgers women's basketball team would meet with Imus face to face in New Jersey. Imus's wife was there, along with parents and head coach Vivian Stringer. Stringer would say they accepted Imus's apology, but they still found his commentary unacceptable and that it was an experience that we will never forget. At the time of the incident, Stringer called his comments racist and sexist that are deplorable, despicable, and unconscionable. Over time, it has only evolved to more hate. Imani McGee Stafford knows it too well. Formerly of the Chicago Sky and Dallas Wings, she told Anscape, On my last Twitter rant, I go on Twitter rants a lot, that went viral in my comments, a guy was like, Why don't you girls finger each other anyway? Whatever you lesbians do. 
I'm not even gay, but obviously that's the biggest narrative of women's basketball, that we're all gay and butch and hate men. But it's frustrating because that's also a critique of women's sports in general. No male pro athlete has to answer questions about his family, about his sexual life, about when he wants to have kids, about what he's wearing. That's the commentary that only happens with women athletes. The great Elena Deladon would add, when a big media outlet will post something about either me or some other WNBA players, it's always the usual, can you make me a sandwich? Get back into the kitchen. Those are probably the most common ones. And there's some really dirty sexual ones that I'm disgusted by that I wouldn't even want to repeat. But the commentaries still continue to be detrimental to the players. When LSU star Angel Reese opened up. I just try to stay strong like... I've been through so much. I've seen so much. I've been attacked so many times. Death threats. I've been sexualized. I've been threatened. I've been so many things and I've stood strong every single time. And I just try to stand strong for my teammates because I don't want them to see me down and like not be there for them. So I just want to always just know like I'm still a human like all this has happened since I won the national championship. And I said the other day, I haven't had peace since then. And it sucks, And but I still wouldn't change. I wouldn't change anything. And I would still sit here and say like, I'm unapologetically me. I'm gonna always leave that mark and be who I am and stand on that. And hopefully the little girls that look up to me and hopefully I give them some type of inspiration that, you no, know, hopefully it's not this hard and all the things that come at you, but Keep being who you are. Keep waking up every day. Keep mo being motivated. Staying who you are. Staying ten toes. Don't back down. And just be confident. The sleuths of professional thirst baiters came out, like Emmanuel Acho, who has a history of doing so. Yet, even with the Imuses and Achos of the world, nothing, and I mean nothing, could hold back the success of the women's tournament. Iowa's 71-69 win over UConn averaged 14.2 million viewers. The game peaked at 17 million per the post. The previous record for an ESPN basketball broadcast was 13.51 million viewers for Game 7 of the 2018 NBA Eastern Conference Finals between the Cleveland Cavaliers and the Boston Celtics. What should not be forgotten? is ESPN and the NCAA had this product for years and failed to capitalize. In a virtual meeting back in 2021, the NCAA said the women's tournament loses millions every year and has to be subsidized by the men's event. Ben Strauss and Molly Hensley Clancy suggested the organization understated the value of the women's tournament by nearly $100 million. The women are blended into a $500 million ESPN package of 24 championships. The NCAA said the women's event is worth just 15% of that deal or about $75 million. It was safe to say they shortchanged it. In one study conducted by Kaplan, Hecker, and Fink, the law firm commissioned by the NCAA to look at gender equity in NCAA basketball, they stated the nonprofit designed its own system to maximize the value of and support to the Division I Men's Basketball Championship as the primary source of funding for the NCAA and its membership. The study found the NCAA's broadcast agreements, corporate sponsorship contracts, distribution of revenue, organizational structure and culture all prioritize D1 men's basketball over everything else in ways that create, normalize, and perpetuate gender inequities. It's been a tough go for the no one cares about women's sports crowd, I tell you. Take for example the Chicago Cubs. They were in a rain delay in the Jumbotron, showed Iowa, South Carolina. Lavelle E. Neal of the Star Tribune would write, we all should be excited about the championship of a tournament that has delivered time and time again. We also should be embarrassed, ashamed, and chagrined that while this tournament brought out the best in sports, it also revealed a lack of equality and the worst in society. We need to be better. First things first, before we jump into it, if you can, please do become a channel member at youtube.com slash TYT sports to keep us afloat and or go to tyt.com slash join. In addition, if you want to support me, you can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Appreciate the love. I do think it's rather fascinating to look at how there are so many different perspectives to put down a sport that predominantly consists of black women, and yet it is just the language that is simply 
evolved from being so blatantly outright discriminatory with the likes of Don Imus to now seeing the Jason Whitlocks, the Emmanuel Achos, the Outkick the Coverages, all of these people who make up right-wing media latching themselves onto the successes that has been led by Caitlin Clark, Dawn Staley, Camilla Cardosa, uh, Angel Reese, Flauger Johnson, and many others, and still trying to pick apart these brave, selfless, strong women. And they are doing so for an agenda. We have seen in the past, Emmanuel Acho has gone on the record on his own Twitter and said blatantly that he doesn't care if it's misinformation. He doesn't care if it's disinformation. If he continues to push numbers, he could then get more brand deals. Jason Whitlock has shown you who he is over the years. The fact that he has stood by Donna Imus and many other falsehoods and shortcomings has shown you already the man has no integrity the man has no character he is what he is it's just another feather in the fedora for him i continue to be frustrated and saddened because we have been ringing the alarm on this for years and i give credit to sedona prince because during the covid years when everything was shut down and the NCAA set up weight rooms and courts for the women and, comp- and food, uh, 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 food catering. The women compared to the men, it was night and day. But then we started looking into this more and more and how you have a product that has so much potential, but ESPN didn't care. And the NCAA didn't care. So to see the evolution of this game while also paying homage to the Maya Moores, the Diana Taurasi's, you know, the Sue Birds, the Lisa Leslie's, the impacts that they have had, but then to see record breaking for a sports network with the ratings is simply lending credence to those like myself and many others who have said you have a gold mine and you simply don't wish to tap into it that's on them they have had this all along and they could have changed many people's minds by simply helping out broadcasting the games giving media coverage and they didn't